Okay, this is my second ranting, hopefully calmer ranting video against this dumb jerk, Daniel Speck. And I did buy his book so that I can say more if I have to. When you see jerk-offs like this writing, and I'm not going to use nice words because there aren't any. This is the very thing Christ warned against in Matthew 24. Do not be deceived. Many will come in my name. Your first big clue that this guy's a liar. Maybe he doesn't know he's a liar, but you can lie and not know. Prophetic mysteries. He doesn't know what the Greek word mysterio means. It's translated mystery. It was coined by Paul. And it means known. Doctrine known. It's not mysterious. There's no mystery about it. There's nothing mysterious about the Bible at all. But it's a mystery to you if you don't learn it. So prophetic mysteries, there are none. Zero. There never were any. Bible, starting in Genesis 1, I've been proving this now for eight years, gives you an annual timeline. So you always know what time it is. It is not a mystery. Except to people who don't learn it. Which Speck obviously didn't. Because to him, they're prophetic mysteries that he's exploring. Uh, not with God, he's not exploring them. This guy's a jerk. Period. End of story. Okay, now. Let's go further. Number of clues. Bible doesn't give you clues. Ever. It gives you straight forward information. But if you don't read it carefully, then to you it'll be a mystery and fuzzy and you will be clueless. So when it says we can expect Jesus Christ to return, He's proving how clueless he is because in Acts 1, Christ specifically said, and this was after he rose now, okay? The first time he talked about it, he said it's not given to anybody. That's in Matthew 24. It's not given to anybody, not the angels, not even the son to know when, okay? But in Acts 1, the wording is very different. He says, you won't know. Yeah, because he's risen now. He knows. You don't. Ask one. Go read it. Even in translation, they didn't screw it up so much you can't tell. Nobody knows. You don't know. That's what he's telling them in Acts 1. So we can expect Jesus to return in 2030 when he said you won't know? It's up to the Father? Which is what he prayed for in John 17. Would, would Father go against his own son who asked him to have the, our return to be up to father and then Christ himself telling the apostles they won't know because it's up to dad. So what, this jackass, lying, stinking, worse than Trump jackass is going to say we can expect Jesus Christ to return in 2030? It's sheer BS, honey. He's picking a date that he doesn't even know where it comes from. But I do. And I'm gonna and I've been doing videos on it, so if you've been following those videos, you're gonna start laughing. If you haven't, well then you can start learning it. Some scriptures point to this particular year. No, they don't. The scriptures that point to actual years I've been doing Here, I've been showing you the actual years in the actual scripture, in the Hebrew and the Greek, but here are the Greek, 137 videos in the playlist, and we started it in uh, February of 2016, 137 freaking videos showing you how you can tell. And it's not telling you about when he's coming back. It's telling you what history's going to be like. So this jerk off doesn't even know. Worse. 
The prophet Hosea wrote of the Lord's second coming. Now this is this is this shows you just how idiotic this guy is. I will go away and return to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. He will revive us after two days. He will raise us up on the third day. I think it's been a lot more than two days. He will revive us after two days? Now, what he'll do with this garbage he just say, well, see, it's the day of the Lord, and it's a thousand years. Yeah, and it's actually 20, 10, 50 each. Because starting in Genesis, Genesis chapter 1 tells you it's 10, 50 years, not a thousand. The thousand plus 50. It's a thousand for the regular civilization period and the 50 years for Jubilee for evangelization of the Gentiles. So he doesn't even understand what this means. And it's not he will revive us after two days. Okay? At best, you're talking 2,100 years. Because that's the timeline that Moses started in Genesis 1. Which this guy doesn't even know. The second big problem of his stupidity. This is the prophet Hosea. He belongs to Israel. Israel's time was 2,100 years. I've been doing videos on that now for eight years. Actually, I learned that um, in 2004. I started my mirroring.htm on it. And that's where I did that worksheet that you'll see in the first video. He will revive us after 2,100 years, but it was conditional which is what Moses kept on saying from Genesis 1, and especially in Psalm 90, the way it ends, establish our hands. Like, you know what? This this 2100 might not complete. Yeah. It didn't complete because Messiah came and said, no, he will raise us up on the third day. Now, this this, this shows his, he's, he's even dumber than I thought. The third day, raising us up on the third day, that's Christ raising himself, being raised up himself. Okay, three days after he died, Matthew 12, 40 through 41. We are in Christ. You get that? That's literal days. Okay? So, so Hosea, at best, is making a play on the fact that there was 2,100 years for the Goyim, 2,100 years for the Jews, and then the millennium was supposed to occur. That's Psalm 90's layout. Go see my Psalm 90 videos in Vimeo. I did them years ago. Okay? But now he's playing on a literal day because everybody's in Christ after he pays the price on the cross. So when he's raised up, we're raised up. It's not Second Advent. Okay? It's not second advent on the this this phrase highlighted in blue is not second advent he's paralleling the payment on the cross which will justify a second advent but the 2100 years did not complete which this jerk doesn't even understand now the 2100 years got truncated by the jews to 2000 because they're leaving out the Goyim periods. You know, the last 50 years of each 1050 is for evangelizing the Goyim. And you'll find that in the Sanhedrin, um, 97 through 99, of the Talmud, go talk to any Jew you know. This guy doesn't even know anything about that. Answering the last day, skeptics who will cry, where is the promise of his coming? The apostle Peter said, and now he's also citing. This is, this is Psalm 90, verse 4. One day is a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. So this jackass doesn't even know the 1050. And Peter in particular outlined the 1050. I've made videos on Peter. You can go look at my Peter meter videos in Vimeo. Peter's using a 1050 year schedule. Just like everybody else since Moses. 
So this jackass doesn't even understand what, what Psalm 90 is about. It's a plot of time, and the time was supposed to end at 4200, and then the millennium was supposed to begin. 4200 would have been R94 AD. Well, it's kind of past that now. Okay? So here he is. He's taking a day and a thousand, and, and he's, he's just saying, well, that means that it's going to happen 2030. Where does it say that? Even using the verses he's using, it does not say 2030. It does not say 2,000 years after the cross. It does not say that. The text that he's using, the proof text, the, the, the cherry picking and the twisting of the text that he's using right here, they don't say anything about 2030 at all. This was to the Jews. Peter, who is writing post-cross, is saying, when he says one day is like a thousand years, he's not saying, oh, the Lord's going to come back in 2,000 years. He's saying, hi, you don't know how long it's going to be because Peter was one of the guys who was there in Acts 1 when the Lord said, you don't know. So this guy is spitting on the word of God. Do you get that? And then Jesus stayed with the Samaritan woman who is a prophetic type of the church for two days. Oh, really? You know what a Samaritan was? Samaritan was a version of Jew that the Jews didn't like because they had a different sort of set of beliefs versus the Jews. She's not a prophetic type of the church. And he stayed with her for two days? After two days, he went forth from there. He didn't stay with her. He See, it says Jesus stayed with the Samaritan woman. He didn't stay with her. He stayed with the apostles. Go read the text yourself. After two days, he went forth from there. That's not telling you it's going to come in 2030. See, he's, he's, he's twisting. This is somebody who hates God and just wants to make money off you so you'll drool over 2030 because that's the next upcoming date. And Jesus remained two days before crossing the Jordan. So every time he sees the word two days, he's, he's saying that that means 2,000. 2,000 from when, honey? Not necessarily 2,000 from, from the cross. You're just making that up. Because he stayed two days in other places too. But he said he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Huh? Crossing the Jordan into Israel is a prophetic type of the second coming? No. It isn't. Never has been. The good Samaritan, a prophetic type, gave the innkeeper two didn't see this is how they lie. They see the word two, and they see the word a thousand, and therefore every time they see the word two, they have to twist it to mean whatever they want it to mean. Equally two days wages or two days stay at the end. The two denarii may be, may be, see, may be, he's hedging here, so, because he's going to turn out to be wrong. Just like Harold Camping. Harold Camping did this bullshit. You know what God did to Harold Camping? He put him in diapers. That's what he's going to do to Donald Trump, too. And that's what he's going to do to this guy. Put him in diapers. You're lying against my word. That's Jeremiah 28. Look what happened to Han Hananiah. First, you get you get discredited. That's going on with Donald Trump now. That happened to Harold Camping over and over and over again. Then he disables you. In Camping's case, Camping had a stroke and couldn't talk. That might happen to this guy. might happen to Trump. And then you die. Why? Because as Jeremiah 28 says, you spoke falsely against the Lord. That's what he's doing here. Crossing the Jordan into Israel. Notice this is all Israel stuff. This isn't, this isn't church. The good Samaritan, the type of Christ. No, the good Samaritan was a sinner. And he gave two denarii. I mean, did you... This is like word salad from Donald Trump. You see the word two, and it has to mean 2030. Ah, uh, no. Two means two. 2030 means 2030. Okay? 
This guy's a jackass. If the church has prophesied the last 2,000 years, well, that's where it gets really interesting because the church isn't prophesied the last 2,000 years. It's prophesied the last maybe 3,500 years because that's what I started doing with this. Parousia is Greek word for appearing. Okay. And that's the actual Greek text. Okay. And this is Luke talking about the first thousand, but Christ goes on past that. Way past that. And if you were to download the actual documents of the actual Greek and see it yourself, then you see he goes to 3250 AD. That's way, way beyond 2030. So the church age is not prophesied to last 2,000 years. It could last actually more than through 3250 AD. But since this jackass can't read the Bible, or won't, and he wouldn't know the Greek if it bit him, then he's making up whatever makes him feel good about his interpretation. It has nothing to do with Bible, baby. Which began with the Pentecost. So yeah, it began with the Pentecost. But there's nothing in here saying that the church is only going to last 2,000 years. Now, where does he get that number? Well, the Jews have an expression. 2,000 years for the Goyim, 2,000 years for the Jews, then Messiah comes. And that is the topic. These are my Vimeo videos. That is the topic of... These are the videos I did here on Genesis. Right here. You just barely see it. Let me see if I can get it to... See? See? This is the whole timeline. It's 1050. And it fits the Bible Genesis 5 dates exactly. Once you know it's 1050. Now, what the Jews thought was, okay, here's the first, thousand, first 2100 for the Goyim. Here's 2100 for the Jews. Then Messiah comes, and maybe he has his own 2000. That's also in Sanhedrin 97 through 99. Okay. That's also in Sanhedrin 97 through 99 of the Talmud. Okay. So, but Matthew 24 doesn't say that's how long it lasts. When you go through these, you know, these links, okay, and you download and look at the material, see, here's the actual download, that goes all the way to 3250 AD, not 2000, in Matthew 24, which is the prophetic passage, okay? So, this is all BS. At best, he's getting a garbled idea from the Talmud. Okay? His dates for birth and resurrection of Jesus are flat wrong. Okay? And mankind seems to have been given. Uh, no, when you look at the timeline that goes to 3250 AD, that's another Talmudic thing. Only it's not 7,000 years. It's 7350. And Christ is playing to the Talmud on that. Okay, well then it's not 2,000 years. Your math doesn't even work. Because there's more than 2,000 years left to get to 7,000 years. Okay? Period. But he's not cap. Christ doesn't cap it there. But this guy doesn't even know what the what, how to account from Genesis forward. He doesn't even understand what the accounting was. And when he said was about 2,000 years, that means he can't read Bible. Because it's 2,100 years. And the big problem was is that Abraham matured 54 years early. So it was 2046 when Abraham matured. Okay. 
and Christ therefore had to die on his schedule. So all of this, this whole business right in here, proves he doesn't even, he, you, you wouldn't even need the Bible meter that we found to know this. I learned it before I learned the meter. I learned it from Genesis 5. I learned it from Daniel 9. I learned it from just adding and subtracting the numbers of the, the kings and all that stuff. And he, he doesn't know. Okay? This leaves no more. No, it's much more than. Okay? 3250 minus 2000 is more than 1050 years. It's 200 years off at least. Okay? And then he doesn't even understand Jubilee. Jubilee occurs every 50 years. Okay? He doesn't know the 49 meter that Daniel used in Daniel 9, praying 49 years after the temple fell. He doesn't even know that. Okay? And he's using Jubilee accounting. When the Bible uses sabbatical 70, uh, 490 accountings, 490 plus 70 plus 490, he doesn't even know that. He's using the book of Jubilees. That's another Jewish book. Israel crossing the Jordan. That's not church. There are two walls. Ephesians 2. Two covenants. One for the Jews and one for church. And churches is very different. This guy doesn't even know the difference. This is just all BS numbers. This is like a Donald Trump speech where he just he manufactures things to make it fit his, what he wants you to believe. Okay? So because it marks 70 jubilees in the Battle of Jericho. What the f Excuse my French. What does the Battle of Jericho have to do with church? And that's not even the right date for it. What does the Battle of Jericho have to do with church? Not a thing. Oh, Rahab is a prophetic type of the church. Really? Says who? Not Bible. And Rahab was taken out following the seventh trumpet on the seventh day of battle. Uh, no, and the seventh trumpet that's in Revelation is not at all related. Because first of all, it's about, it's about um, a different angel. This, this, this whole, this is just like manufactured. It's like when Donald Trump talks, you know, he makes up stuff. And then he says it's true, and then you do your fact check, and you find out everything he said is wrong. This is bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Hosea prophesied the exact year of the second coming. Ah, uh, no. This is all a lie. Complete lie. Okay, but I'll reserve that for another time, because I'm too angry now, and I'm sending too much.